SMT Nation, we back. Nation, big day for the uh, for the YouTube channel and I think also for customers of AT&T. We've got a big development going on here with the network and AT&T is doing a lot of uh, changes on the network level. Hardware, software defined, you know, change and direction for the network. I'll, I'll talk about that here in today's video. But the important part is, is the process has begun in Ohio. Uh, so I want to tell you guys what's going on, what we saw, the tower sites we visited, what this tells us. And uh, of course, all these photos are posted on my Patreon page. So if you want to get, um, you know, look at the tower sites in a, in a more high quality, higher resolution look, uh, you can support us there. A link is down in the description. You can get access to all the benefits and perks that we have there. Uh, please do like and share this video. Subscribe if you're new here and turn on the bell notifications icon to never miss an upload from the SMT. All right, folks, pictured is the first uh, Nokia to Ericsson conversion for AT&T in the state of Ohio. It's been completed. It's actually live. We tested it. There's a live stream on the YouTube channel. You guys can check out if you want. And uh, I've got some video clips of the major kind of moments within that live stream, and I'll be dropping those videos here in the coming days. Uh, but yeah, this conversion uh, now complete location-wise is in Fitchville, Ohio. Uh, definitely not a very well-developed area. I will tell you guys, when I made the trip, I was on the interstate for about 20 or 25 miles, and then um, an additional 20 to 25 miles kind of on the back roads, off the freeway, uh, kind of like on a state route. This is definitely rural, uh, low population density, extremely low population density. I saw more farms than homes. Uh, I saw, you know, no businesses no commercial activity and and i mean that's how i would characterize the the drive that's what i saw uh there were stretches where i didn't see any cars passing me for several miles you know um with respect to the network low density sites a lot of 4g lte in these extended areas as well i didn't see 5g for several miles of uh, five and six mile stretches you know for tower sites so really, really getting stretched thin. Um, but something I wanted to share with you guys for sure, now that I kind of gave you the backdrop, is this is a 300-foot tower site. Uh, there is actually fiber connected to it, which is kind of cool, right? Uh, we did a little homework. Shout out to the guys on the live stream. Uh, Everstream is providing the fiber to the site. Looks like a one-gig fiber circuit, and it performed really, really well and, and, and really good. And there's a couple things I'll mention about that. Uh, here's an image of the gear a little bit kind of a focus here uh, of that gear and you'll see it's the same basic setup we've been seeing for AT&T not much really has changed with respect to the formation they use two larger antennas which probably includes you know all the the low band and the sub three gigahertz mid band frequencies like the PCS AWS and then like the the band 14 band 12 band 29 and also including like band 30 and stuff so all those radios are up there the antennas are up there uh i'll get you guys a better look here show you a little bit more detail all right so this shot should get you a little closer and you can pinch the zoom here's going to be your lower frequencies on these bigger antennas you'll see on the the right and the left of the two smaller ones in the middle by the way shout out to verizon just below the end uh, the rack for AT&T. So AT&T at the top, Verizon just below them. Uh, Verizon's got the C-band up there, no CBRS though. Uh, just to kind of <laughs> shout that out. But yeah, in the middle, you've got the uh, the C-band and the DOD. And typically what AT&T has done in the past is they do the, the 3.7 gigahertz, the C-band at the top. And then just below that is the DOD. Um, so that's that's kind of a look there. Here's a zoom for you guys. Again, pinch to zoom. You can get more detail. Uh, and, and this is definitely a new, uh, you know, this is definitely new gear from Ericsson. I, I can confirm. The ones on the outside, so the one on the left here and the other one on the right, those don't look like they've been changed. So that's still Nokia. Uh, the only thing I saw is uh, the, the ones in the middle. That's, that's not Nokia. That is definitely Ericsson gear. It's a little bit more compact. It's a little bit smaller, uh, a more defined square, right? In terms of like the sides all being the same length. 
all right so and, and even the color was a little different to me it appeared to be more white meanwhile when i used to look at or check out the nokia gear in ohio it's it's a little gray all right so it was noticeable when i pulled up i could tell uh there was a change but i don't think they changed these nokia antennas on the left and the right maybe they just did the radios maybe uh it's really hard to tell but you can see the gear up there um a lot of cables and a lot of wires uh here's a very very close-up look at the gear again the the big thing here is this uh the three gigahertz action here in the middle that's providing capacity and i will tell you guys the capacity was tremendous i was seeing you know 600 plus megabits per second on a one gig fiber circuit very very good performance the loaded latency was phenomenal it was like 100 milliseconds for for download and upload the um unloaded latency was impressive too it came in at 20 milliseconds very consistently and the reason why this is important is because typically on nokia sites in ohio i see those numbers are much higher right the loaded latencies are usually three times higher the um as well as the um unloaded latencies double or triple uh those numbers so i was really happy with that and as i tested and i drove around and i drove away from the site one mile performance two mile performance three mile performance i didn't see much fall off where we started to see some of the the capacity kind of deteriorate a little bit and lose some of the, the the punch was around the four mile range and and we still got connectivity up to almost five or six miles so the the power levels seem great the performance the the spectral efficiency really good the latency is really good i was very happy with the outcome again you can watch the live stream it's still up. I'm not going to take it down or anything like that. I've got clips coming, so you can stay tuned for that. But the performance on the gear was great. Even in kind of like the in-between sector zone, still performed really well. Uh, good from distance, good from range. Uh, definitely full power blasting, you know, the full, full speed ahead. And, you know, being that they're on the top rack, you get really good propagation and reach. Uh, here's a look at the, the bottom part of the tower. Uh, it is a Tillman infrastructure-based facility. So I did see Verizon's gear there. Uh, actually, here on this box, uh, there were three different levels for power. There was uh, A, B, C, and I think AT&T was B, and I think Verizon was C uh, for how they did that. So I guess potentially they've got power for a third carrier should they decide to be there. But T-Mobile is actually like a half mile away um, behind there uh, on a different site like a solo. Possibly maybe a, an old sprint keep or something like that i'm not sure backup generators and electricity there there's the verizon stuff in the middle and there's the kohler backup generator for at&t to the right that's what i got for you guys here today this is site one and uh there, there's more to check out uh i'm going to be going to one next week i think that one is going to be in a different direction relative to cleveland so i'm gonna have to arrange that plan that and i just want to see if they do the same kind of things or if we see different antenna usage, or if they're going to maintain the kind of what we saw in this particular setup. But um, yeah, no 10 gig fiber circuits, right? Uh, <laughs> hard to come by over there. I did not see any, not for T-Mobile, not for Verizon, not for AT&T. One gig fiber, I did see a lot of that. I didn't see, you know, the situation where it was only uh, microwave, which was cool. I actually didn't see much microwave. Uh, definitely fiber was the way to go just not the 10 gig multi gig variety um so we covered a lot here in this video and you know if you want to continue to kind of keep tabs on this situation as it develops i'll be dropping more videos doing more live streams and uh you guys can kind of catch some of that make sure you subscribe for it and turn on the bell notifications icon to never miss an upload appreciate what the channel is doing you guys could support us the links are in the description and if there's anything else i forgot to mention in this video i'll be sure to cover it in the next one. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one. Peace.